It's about 8 in the morning on Thursday, August 24th, 2023. Um, I just put up the posts on this wire. I put the wire out yesterday morning. I didn't take a film then. Anyway, walking slowly through the grass, I'm able to see better detail of what's going on. This part of the pasture, this is the first pasture that'll be on Friday morning. Probably Friday evening too. I might give them two sections so they can get that tree for shade there. Anyway, you can see here that the, the grass is really thick actually. Some places it's as deep as my boot is, which is about a foot and a half. Um, the goat weed has a hard time with it. See, there's some small goat weed plants. I'm trying to establish themselves. The ground is soft. Didn't take much to push the posts into the ground. Um, but this is going to be good, good grazing. And probably much more than they can eat in a day. I've been debating whether to do back grazing um, or back fencing. And I think I'm not because each of these sections is three and a half days long. <clears throat> And uh, some of the sections are going to be pretty sparse. They're not going to be very good. This is what the goat weed hides, by the way, because it's taller than the grass. All you see is goat weed. The tops of the goat weed. You don't see the grass that's growing. There's hardly any goat weed. Anyway, from here on out, it's just goat weed. <laughs> so this isn't a lie that this is goat weed. And the grass is thinner here. And a paler green. My only hope is that the goat weed, um, as long as I don't overgraze, my hope is that the goat weed will just go away. I've checked lots of different places and they all said overgrazing, overgrazing, overgrazing. So, uh, last year I believe I over overgrazed. Um, we had uh, another year of drought back to back in 2022. And I decided to keep them rotating. My thought process was that they would spread the manure around and I could feed or hay the cattle to supplement what they're missing. Um, the, uh, the net result was that I, I injured the grass. And so when the rain did come, it wasn't able to recover very quickly. What I should have done in hindsight being 2020 and all, is I should have confined the cows to one spot in my field and fed and hayed them there. And then let the rest of the pasture rest until the rain came. Um, uh, Greg Judy, my, my spiritual mentor, <laughs> he, he doesn't know me probably, but he probably knows lots of people like me. Anyway, Greg Judy, his recommendation is the minute you think you've got a drought, you got to sell your cows. There's just no two ways about it. You're going to save a lot of heartache. And he sold, I think he sold his steer crop this year because Missouri didn't get very much rain. He kept the, the cows and the heifers and he sold the steer. Um... The reason why he sold the steer and not the cows and the heifers is obvious. He wanted to keep his herd. And then a couple weeks ago, it looks like they got some really good rain. Like three and a half or five and a half inches or something like that. So. Yeah, you can see this part of the field is not doing so well. Anyway, uh, Greg Judy made a video about the Blackfoot vaccine. Uh, he made a lot of really good points. Um, I am making a conscious decision not to get the black foot vaccine. I'm, uh, accepting the advice of Greg Judy, but not following it. Um, 
his warning is that if you don't get the Blackfoot vaccine, your herd's going to die. Well, not your whole herd, just some of the cows in your herd. The best cows. Best calves, right? And uh, that's a risk I'm willing to take, actually. And I know it's sad to see cows die, especially when they struggle and die. I certainly know that. Um, he got away without doing the Blackfoot vaccine for nearly 20 years. And the uh, reason why I'm not vaccinating is not because of the money or even because of the effort. Um, it's because I don't trust the vaccine companies right now. I don't trust the agricultural industry. And I don't trust doctors or scientists. Um, they completely violated that trust with COVID-19. <clears throat> Their behavior went way beyond the pale. And... Really, the only way to restore that trust is to hold a trial for those people who um, committed errors and punish them for the nature of those errors that they committed. Uh, because they violated our rights in a very fundamental way, um, the only appropriate punishment is restitution. And... If their actions caused anyone to die, which it did, they were prescribing remdesivir. They were forcing breathing tubes down the throats rather than following protocol and providing oxygen and other aids. There's a doggy. So their recommendations did cause people to die. I think that's pretty clear. Um, they tried to keep us from using hydroxychloroquine and what's the other drug? It's uh, ivermectin, both of which are perfectly safe for human consumptions, uh, hardly any side effects. And so even if you're taking it uh, uh, preventatively rather than in response to any particular disease or symptoms, What is that? Is that a car? Uh, so it's perfectly safe drugs, uh, but they said don't take it, they're dangerous, they lied. Um, the evidence suggests that people who had COVID or thought they had COVID and took the medicine recovered more quickly. And uh, there was a doctor in New York who was able to save almost every single one of his patients who came in with symptoms of COVID, elderly patients, by prescribing uh, hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, azithromycin and uh, vitamin D. And uh, so yeah, I've lost complete faith in the medical industry and science and everything else like that. And it's up to them uh, to show me that they're going to hold people accountable for what they did. And they're going to have some standard that we can adhere to. And they're going to put some kind of control in place so it doesn't happen again. But we're looking up for this uh, September and October, uh, another blast of COVID mandates. And uh, I, like hopefully the majority of Americans, uh, refuse to comply. I will not stand six feet apart. I will not wear a mask. I will not get a vaccine. If I'm coughing and sneezing and showing symptoms, I will absolutely go outside and cough and sneeze on everybody. I tried to catch COVID uh, during the pandemic. <clears throat> kind of um, as a protest, but also because I realized early on that COVID didn't exist because the data said so. Um, in particular, in Washington state, I looked at the data closely and people were testing positive at the same rate, whether or not they had symptoms. And that shows a test that doesn't have any bearing on the symptoms. And uh, the people who are saying that it's a disease with no symptoms, uh, those people need to be drug out into the street and shot. Um, because I can't think of anything more dangerous than telling people 
that you have a disease when you have no symptoms. Uh, they did track a woman who tested positive who had no symptoms and she flew all over Europe and they found that there was no transmission whatsoever. Nobody that they tested had a positive test. Um, even if it did, it wouldn't have meant anything. The test is useless. And uh, that's where we're at. So uh, my recommendations, if you guys want to listen to me, are number one, don't comply. Don't get tested. Don't quarantine yourself. Um, don't follow any of the guidelines. Uh, if you're a business, um, well, since I own a business, I'm going to just ignore all the health advice. And if a health official or a police officer comes to my trailer, if you try to tell me to enforce it, I'm going to tell them to pound sand. And uh, if a court orders me to do something, I'm going to disobey and go to jail for it. And then sue them for violating my basic rights. Um, I'm willing to do that. I know that my wife might not be very happy about it, but, you know, there's got to be something worth fighting for. And I believe the liberty to, you know, run a business in the way you see fit, according to your conscience, is one of those freedoms. Anyway, yeah, I'm ready for it. Hope you guys are too. Uh, we're Americans. We're not serfs. We're not subjects. We're citizens. As citizens, we own the government, and the government does what we tell it to do. Not the other way around. Uh, government of the people. It comes, that means the authority of the government exists because we allow it to. Um, by the people. That means the people are supposed to be running the government, not some unelected bureaucrats and dictators and people who never won an election in their life, but who just happen to be good at stealing elections. Um, of the people, by the people, for the people. The purpose of the government is to serve the people, not to command them. Um, government is a bad word. It should be called like public services or I, I think even better we just call it what it is um, the hammer or the sword or the spear that uh, we use to beat up bad people and so if you go to the bad person the person who beats up bad people and say can you give me money and food oh, that's ridiculous right um, that's uh, people who do that who expect government to give them things when the only purpose of government is to beat up bad people um, that's ridiculous to me. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, the, combination, the communist takeover of America has already happened. Welcome to the communist states of the United States. Um, it's up to us to uh, rebel and overthrow the communist dictatorship that we're living under. Um, they didn't win a war to take America. They did it by subversion and intrigue and subterfuge. And uh, so the, that shows you that they know exactly who they are and they know exactly how popular they are. And they know exactly what would happen if it went to a hot war. And uh, if they were smart, they would try to prevent that. They've already started killing people who um, utter threats, meaningless threats against the president. Uh, no, rather, I should say the resident. Um, the FBI killed, I think, three people already in the past couple weeks. Old disabled people. Um, uh, people who made threats that there's no way they can possibly ever act on those threats. So they're not any threat at all. It's like saying I'm going to use a giant space laser to destroy Washington, D.C. Um, it's not a threat because I don't have a giant space laser. And even if I did, how would I destroy Washington, D.C. with it? So um, anyway, sanity has left the world because we're living in a communist nation. And uh, we know what we have to do about that. This is my answer to fighting communism in America. Good luck. Um, you're going to have a hard time taking stuff from me. I'm a prickly pear. <laughs> and uh, there's more of us than there are of you. Um, if you want to start shooting people over it, I'm ready. Let's do it. Um, if um, whatever it takes to get people aware of the true situation America's in right now. Guys, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.